Uh, OK, so continuing on page 33. A broadcaster is someone who uh, sends out television programs or radio programs. Um, this could be the owner of the company. This could be someone who is in charge of the show, TV show or radio show. Or it could refer to someone who is giving you the news on these types of programs. Uh, so if it's the news person in Chinese, we would call them Bo Bao Ren. Butcher, someone who prepares meat. Uh, tofu. Uh, carpenter, someone who makes things with wood. Mu Jiang. Chauffeur. This word looks very weird because it comes from French. A chauffeur is a professional driver of uh, like someone who hires a driver to take them uh, places. So it's like a private driver. Uh, remember how to spell this word. It's C-H-A-U-F-F-E-U-R. Very weird word. Chemist. Someone who works with chemicals. Uh, in England, in the UK, this is someone who works at a pharmacy. Yao uh, But everywhere else, a chemist is anyone whose job includes using chemicals. Uh, so like Huashui or something like that. Let's see, computer programmer, someone who creates computer programs. Uh, Construction worker, someone who helps to build a building. My Chinese is terrible today. How do you say construction worker in Chinese? Uh, something like that. Consultant, this one is interesting. If a business has a question or a problem, they can go ask a consultant for help. Gu wen. A cook or a chef, we talked about chef, uh, I think last week or two weeks ago. A chef is a head cook, so all of the other cooks are just people who work to make food. Dancer, someone who dances. Designer, someone who designs. Uh, dancer, like Zhuanye Wudao or something like that. Designer, it depends on what you design. There are many different kinds of designer. Uh, so like it, any kind of sejisi, you can call them a designer. Detective. <laughs> we don't usually call people detectives anymore. A detective is someone who goes around looking for the truth. Um, Zentan. But today we don't call them detectives. We call them private investigators. Uh, in Chinese, Zen Xing Se. Director could be someone in charge of a movie, Dao Yan, could be someone in charge of a uh, running this part of a company. Uh, Editor, someone in charge of writers. Uh, so writers write things and editors make sure that this is what they want. Bianji. Electrician, someone who uh, works with the wires and power of a building. 
呃配电师 ，engineer someone who builds something， 工程师 ，like designs how to build the thing。Executive, this is also an interesting job. Anyone who is in charge of running anything is called an executive. Uh, like, 经理人管理员 So an executive does not have specific work. An executive is in charge of making sure that other people can do something. Uh, farmer, someone who grows plants. Nongfu. Okay, I think these two go together. I think it's supposed to say fashion designer. A fashion designer is someone who designs clothes. Fu Zhuang Si Di Si. Fisherman, someone who fishes. Yu Fu. And then these two also go together. Gas station attendant. We talked about this last time. Did we talk about this last time? I think we talked about this last time. Someone who works at a gas station. Graphic artist, someone who uh, draws like comics or illustrations. Uh, two D artist. Hairdresser is uh, someone who takes care of of women's hair. Usually, we don't use the word hairdresser for men, only for women's hair. Inventor, invent, inventor is not a real job. Come on, that's not a real job. Someone who invents, farming jia. Is that a real job? It, I think it's usually something we、uh, people do when they have time, and money. Janitor, someone who makes sure that the building is clean. Cleaning, uh, cleaning 工 Journalist, someone who looks for news and reports it. Um. Reporter. There we go. Manager, 经理人管理员 someone who manages a place or a group of people. Masseuse, this also comes from French. This is a person who gives you massages. 按摩师 Masseuse. Mechanic, someone who works with machines, like fixes machines. Um, 机械工 Miner, someone who digs for things underground. Kuang Gong. A nun. So,、uh, you, I think this is always a woman. A woman who dedicates her life to、uh, religion. Shonu. Optician.、Uh, someone who, like, when you go buy glasses. Right, the person who finds out what kind of glasses you need. So, Chinese is what? Is when you go buy glasses, someone finds out what kind of glasses you need. So, Chinese is what? Is when you go buy glasses, someone finds out what kind of glasses you need. So, Chinese is what? Is when you go buy glasses, someone finds out what kind of glasses you need. In the United States, because of their medical system, the optician may not be the person who sells you glasses, and the person who sells you glasses may not be an optician. So sometimes you have to go to an optician to find out what kind of glasses you need, and then go to another place to buy the glasses. Pilot, someone who flies a plane, or someone who、uh, sails a boat.、Um, 飞行员或是那个航海家
the person who who guides the boat is also called a pilot. Priest, um, a religious leader in the Catholic Church or in other religions. 神父或是其他宗教的相對應的人 but usually not um, the leader in a Protestant a Christian church. Professor, me. Receptionist, someone who uh, answers the door at a company. So like when, when a customer walks in, uh, the person at the front desk who finds out what the customer wants, uh, takes phone calls, that person. It's a kind of secretary. Repairman, someone who repairs things, fixes fixes things. Uh, let's see. Spy. <laughs> Someone who looks for secrets um, in a different country or in a different company. Jindie. Um, let's see. Supervisor. Someone who manages lower level workers. Uh, so I guess we can call this one 主管. Let's see. Translator, someone who takes things from one language and turns them into another language. Ezo. And then the last one, welder, someone who works with metal, especially someone who connects different kinds of metal. Okay, do you have questions about these jobs? Um, so let's look quickly at page 34. We're not going to do this, but these, these are some questions that you may have to answer if you are applying for a job. Uh, and notice that it also has questions about like, are you a citizen of the US or are you a citizen of um, wherever your job is? Do you have a military service record? Branch of service means uh, where did you join the military? Like, are you the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, that kind of thing? S education experience, business references. So like most of these are standard questions, but also notice like experience, reason for leaving. Why did you leave this job? So uh, as I've reminded you before, even if you're going to quit your job, you should still try to quit in a very elegant way. A very graceful way. Don't piss people off. OK, page 35. Let's do some speaking. So grab a partner and discuss these seven questions with your partner. Uh, what career would be ideal for you? Why? What are you trying to do in order to find a job that you really like? What career do your friends and family believe would be ideal for you? What do ambition, yeshing, and confidence mean to you? Is it good to be ambitious at work? Is there such a thing as being too ambitious or confident? Would you be upset if your boss was a woman or a foreigner? Do you think women and men should be paid the same for the same job? What plans have your parents made for your, their retirement? What will they do after they retire? Would they prefer semi-retirement? 
right? Semi means not entirely, only part time or part of the way. Iban. Do they have a pension scheme? Jing. Okay, grab a partner. I'll give you uh, fifteen minutes to talk. Ten minutes to talk about these questions.
Okay. Let's let's uh, invite someone to the front to share. I'm joking. Don't worry. I'm joking. Uh, let's continue to part B. Um, let's look at some of these that you may not be familiar with. These are situations that some people care about when they look for a job. For example, uh, the first one, are there friends working at this place? Or are there flexible working hours? So not every day is nine to five. You can plan your own weekday. Equal opportunities, which means everybody has uh, the same chance to be promoted. A respectable salary means that the pay is pretty good. Respectable means pretty good. Are there training programs uh, so that you can keep improving while you work? Is there daycare for children somewhere you can place your young kids while you are at work? Uh, do you live far from work or is it close by? Is the job challenging or easy? Uh, you might think easy jobs are the best, but some people like to work uh, in a place where there are many challenges. Are there chances to be creative or do you only have to follow orders? Are there benefits packages, which means like does your job give you extra money or extra opportunities? Um, if in the US, how good is the health plan? Uh, just, uh, um, health care in the US is tied to work. So when we talk about benefits in the US, this usually means health care. Uh, can it give you valuable experience? Is there performance related pay, which means do you make more money if you do better? Or does everybody make uh, the same amount of money depending on your position? Do you have the chance to work independently or do you always have to work with other people? Are there promotion possibilities? Um, I know that some jobs pretend that there are promotion possibilities. They say, they tell you if you work hard, you can get promoted, but actually they don't promote anyone. So you have to be careful about this. Is there regular feedback on performance? Which means, does someone tell you if you are doing a good job or not? Is there a liberal dress code? Can you choose what you want to wear? Uh, or do you have to wear like a suit and tie or a suit, a blouse and dress or a uniform? Are there travel opportunities? Is there a union or a chance to strike? A union is a group of workers who, who stand together to fight for better pay or other benefits. And to strike is to stop working in order to fight for something. Is it a multinational company? Does the job give you status or prestige? Is it varied work, which means the job changes every day? Do you get the chance to meet important people? Is there a lack of stress? And do you get to make commissions? A commission means that everything you sell, you yourself get part of the money. Uh, I think or something like that. So these are some things you might think about when you're looking for work. Um, the next part you can do on your own. This is a survey about uh, things that you may or may not be interested in. 
And so if you're not sure what kind of job you want, you can do this survey and find out. Um, let's look at some things you may not be familiar with. Oh no, these are all pretty pretty OK. Yeah, so you can do that uh, if you want to. OK, let's do some more speaking. Uh, actually, let, let's take a break and then after we come back, we can do uh, part D.
OK, let's look at page 37, part D. Here we have three situations that you can uh, pretend and act out with your partner. Number one, you go to a job agency, ask them if they have any jobs that you might be qualified to do. So a job agency is a place where uh, they have jobs to offer and you can go ask for a job. So one partner will be the job seeker and the other one will be the person working at the job agency. Or you can do number two, persuade the boss of a company why you think you should be hired for the position advertised in the newspaper. Uh, so there's a job in the newspaper and you go and you ask for the job and the other partner will be the boss. Uh, and number three, you go for a job interview but have no experience. Explain to the person interviewing you why you should have the job. So it's the same thing, you're asking for a job but you have no experience. Um, so choose one of these with your partner and I'll give you 10 minutes to act out this situation.
Okay, let's. Let's continue. Uh, in part E, let's let's do this one together. So these are questions about writing a resume. Are they true or false? A, the heading on the first page should be resume. So at the top of the very first page, you should write resume. True? I don't think you have to. I think the person reading it will know that it's a resume, even if you don't tell them. Uh, I think at the top you should put your name. Your name is more important. To help the person remember you. A hiring manager will probably have to read like dozens or hundreds of resumes. It's important to help that person remember who you are. So instead of resume, I would put your name. Uh, so A is false. B, the longer the resume is, the better. Is this true? Uh, again, I don't think this is true. Uh, again, hiring managers are very busy. So they don't want to spend all day flipping through a 20 page resume. Uh, I think the uh, a good length is around two, maybe three pages if you have done a lot of things. If you have not done many things, one page is enough. So B is false. C, you should never include information about a low paying part time job. So like if you worked at McDonald's, you should not put that on your resume. Is this true? I think you should put that on your resume. Think about this. If you're looking for someone to work for you, do you want somebody with no experience or do you want somebody with experience working at McDonald's? I think most people would choose the second person because at least it's some kind of work. And if the hiring manager understands what it's like to work at McDonald's, they will realize that the second person has experience working in a complicated, fast paced working environment. Uh, and if they can survive that environment and do very well, they will probably probably be a good worker. So C, I think you should include it, is also false. D, you should put the job you had the longest first. Is this true? This is not true. A resume, you should start with your latest job and then go backwards in time and end with your earliest job. Of course, if one of those jobs uh, you worked for a long time, you can highlight that you worked there for a long time. But uh, hiring managers don't just care about each job. They also care about uh, the direction of your career. Where did you start? Where did you end? How did you choose between jobs? Um, and so it, they care about you as a person, so it makes more sense to organize the list of your jobs according to uh, chronology, time order. And of course, the most relevant job is the most recent job. So you should put that one first. So question D is also false. Question E, you should mention your blood type. Is this true? I think usually no. But if you're applying for a dangerous job or like some job in a hospital or something, any job where that information could be important, 
then you can consider including that. Uh, especially if you have a rare blood type. Uh, if the job is dangerous, you might want to mention to your employer that um, your blood type is not that common. You know, in case if you get hurt and they need to give you blood. But usually you don't have to mention your blood type. A related question. If I have AIDS, should I put that on my resume? I think no. Uh, according to the law, people should not be able to make a decision to give you a job or not based on if you have AIDS. That's illegal. So there's no reason to put that information on your resume. Uh, but again, if you are applying for a dangerous job or a job that works the where you might get work, uh, where you might get hurt or where you might uh, your blood might come into contact with other people, you could talk about that in the interview. But I would not put that on the uh, resume. Question F. The last heading on the resume should be personal goals. So like each section of the resume, the last section should be personal goals. Is this true? I don't think this is true. I think this is false. There are two answers to this question. If personal goals means what you want in your personal life that should not be on your resume right if it's not related to work you shouldn't put it there but if your so-called personal goals are like uh, ways you want to improve as a worker ways you want to improve as like you want to learn a new skill or you want to uh, in the future you want to achieve some kind of position that's related to your work, so you could put that on your resume and I would put that earlier in the resume, maybe next to the objective. Right, remember on your resume very near the top, you should write what job are you applying for? Uh, and under that you can also write like your long term goal is like you want to. So like if you're applying for. A manager position. Uh, then under that you might say your long term goal is to like be an executive. Uh, that way the hiring manager knows you're not just here for the money. You actually want to, uh, you care about this job and you want to move up. And uh, companies always like workers who care about the job. But Either way, it should not be the last part of your resume. The last part is usually references. So F is also false. G, you may repeat some information under different headings. So maybe you have some experience, you're not sure if it's uh, job experience or other experience, so you can write it twice. Is this true? No, it's not true. If you write it twice, the hiring manager will think that you did this job twice. And this this sometimes happens, right? Maybe uh, I leave here and go take another job and I realize that job is shit and I come back here. Right, so I have this job twice. So if it's only one time, don't write it twice. It can be confusing. So the answer to all of these questions is false. Do you have questions?
OK, so as I said last time, if you want to write an English resume, you can email it to me and I will check it for you and give you some comments. On page 38, we have some common interview questions. So if you're preparing for a job interview, you can look at these questions and think about what kind of answers you want to give. Remember that uh, if your answer is a negative kind of answer, for example, uh, like why did you leave your last job? If you left your last job because your last job was shit, don't say that, right? Say something like um, it did not fit with your personal goals, uh, career goals, or it did not offer opportunities for improvement and promotion, right? Don't say it was a bad job say that you wanted more than the job could give you. So like if you have this kind of negative answer, try to find a positive way to give that answer. OK, let's go to page 39. We have yet another list of jobs. So let's look at these are more special jobs. Clown, uh, someone who wears makeup and makes kids laugh. Xiao Cou. A mule handler. Any kind of handler is usually someone who takes care of animals uh, or <laughs> celebrities. Guan Li Ming Xingderen sometimes will be called a handler or someone who, who uh, guides kids in a certain situation. A mule is a cross between a horse and a donkey. Uh, so, Luozi, I think, is the Chinese. US President Biden. Stuntman. A stuntman is like on a movie or TV show. Uh, when the actor has to do something dangerous, they will get somebody else to do that. Teji. Oh, this is interesting. Stewardess for the first flight to the moon. Would you want to work on the first flight to the moon? It could be amazing, or you could die. A lion tamer, someone who takes care of lions. Shizi. You should know lion, right? The Lion King. Tightrope walker, someone who walks a tightrope. A tightrope is a rope that you uh, extend between two places very high, and someone will walk across the rope. Uh, a window cleaner for the tallest building in the world. Would you want to be a window cleaner for the tallest building in the world? Some people would say yes. You should stay away from those people. I'm joking. Mother for a family of five. A family of five, if there is a father, then it's three kids. Would you be would you want to be a parent of three children? Oh, by the way, is this a job? Mother of three children? Is that a job? Yes, it's a job. If you don't believe me, try to take care of three kids and do another job. It'll feel like two jobs. Bank robber, someone who takes money from a bank without permission. Uh, is bank robber a job? It is unless you ask the government. Uh, there are people who rob banks as a job, like that's how they get most of their money. Uh, but you probably don't want to tell the government that's your job. A kitchen assistant for a submarine. A kitchen assistant is one step below a cook. 
So if cook is 厨师 then the kitchen assistant is uh, like um, I don't know someone who like cuts the vegetables and like prepare washes the pans, right? Who who does all of the other things in the kitchen? Would you want to do that job on a submarine, Chen Ting? Um, the thing about cooking on a submarine is that you never stop, because on a submarine, uh, the day is divided into three shifts, and everybody, like each job, has three people doing the job, one per shift. Which means that there will always be people who are getting off shifts and have to eat. So you will always have to be cooking or you will always have to be like washing dishes for your entire shift. It's not a very uh, relaxing job unless you like washing dishes. A cook for an expedition to the North Pole. Expedition. Uh, it means a long and dangerous journey, 远行，或是冒险、探险 ，to the North Pole, Beijing. Would you want to be a cook on this journey? A toy tester. <laughs> so any time a company makes a new product, they have to make sure that the product is safe and that it works. Even if it's a toy, they also have to test the toy, and so it is someone's job to test new products and new toys. Would you want to be a toy tester? Would you want to be a video game tester? It sounds fun, but then you realize,、uh, for example, if you're a video game tester, your job is not just To play the video game, your job is to try to break the video game so that the designers can fix any problems. So it's not just finish the game; it's try to finish everything and try to think of ways to do unusual things.、Uh, so it can very quickly become quite boring. The same for a toy tester, right? You're not just playing with the toy; you're like throwing it, you're crushing it, you're burning it, all kinds of things to test、uh, for safety. Parachutist. A parachute is when you jump out of a plane. It's what you have on your back to make you fall slower. Jiang Luosan. So a parachutist is an expert. Uh, on parachutes,、uh, so I guess like if you want to jump out of a plane, this is the person who will take you, right? And who will uh, uh, be on your back, and they will be the person controlling the parachute. So a parachutist is basically this job is you jump out of a plane every day. Is that a fun job? Would you want to jump out of an airplane every day? Uh, okay, and then here you have some suggestions during the interview. Maintain eye contact. So when you're、uh, when someone is talking to you, when you're talking to somebody, try to look at them. Try not to、uh, look at somewhere else, like I do. Answer the questions positively. I just talked about this. Look cooperative and willing, right? So whatever they say, like look like you want to agree, you want to help them. Look alert and interested. Alert means you're paying attention and you're ready. Be polite. Always be polite. There's no situation where you should not be polite. Be confident, but not. Cocky or arrogant, right? So, so not too confident. Usually, we call this a quiet confidence. Okay.、Uh, do you have questions about all of that?
OK, let's go to page 40 and we will do the listening practice. Let's look at the questions first. Uh, so you will hear a talk, which is a speech about how to get ready for an interview. OK. One, what are the two common feelings about having an interview? So you're looking for feelings. Two, you can overcome these feelings if you prepare yourself in five ways. What are they? OK, blah because blah and blah, blah because blah, blah, for example, men blah and women blah. OK, so we can pay attention to uh, when the speaker talks about men and women. And then D and E are just. Uh, listen for the answer yourself. OK, let's take a listen. OK. Let's see how much you heard. First one, what are the two common feelings about an interview? One is you might feel on edge. Which means worried, not sure. An edge is a side. So like this is an edge. So if you're on edge, you might feel like it's not safe, you might fall, you're not sure. The other one is insecure, which also means not safe. Uh, in this case, you might feel not safe about yourself and your own performance. Two, the five ways, OK. A is to practice before the interview. And there are two reasons. One, it will make your performance more effective, uh, your communication more effective. And B, it will give you confidence. 
or not B, the second one, it will give you confidence. B, prepare some questions to ask the interviewer. I think we mentioned this before. Usually at the end of the interview, the interviewer will ask you, and do you have any questions for us? Uh, and the talk says that you should prepare some questions. And this is because asking questions shows that you are interested in the job. You're not just here to make money. You actually want to uh, do a good job. It shows that you're interested. C, dress appropriately, wear the right clothes. Uh, and for men, the talk says that you should shave, guahuzi, shave. And you should at least wear a tie, daling tai. So even if you don't have a full suit, you should at least wear a tie. For women, the talk says that you, uh, you should wear office clothes, so clothes that are suitable for office work, and that you should not have too much makeup. Uh, like unless you want you're working on like a TV program or entertainment. For a regular office job, uh, just a little makeup is fine. Question D, the fourth way, show up early to the interview by around 10 to 15 minutes. And the talk also gives you two reasons. One, it gives you time to relax before the interview. Two, uh, the people working there will have a good impression of you. They will know that you won't be late. And then the fifth way is to talk about yourself positively. Try to focus on your strengths. And if you have to talk about your weaknesses, uh, find a positive way to talk about your weaknesses. Uh, let's see, for example, what are what are some weaknesses you might mention? Like uh, interviewers sometimes like to ask you, what is your biggest weakness? Uh, and common answers include, I'm a perfectionist, or so um, I like I sometimes work too hard and uh, I need to focus more on cooperating with a team. Right, so these are weaknesses, but they're actually good weaknesses, right? Which company does not want a worker who works too hard? So find a positive way to talk about yourself. Okay, now that you know what the answers are, let's listen again and see if you can catch those answers.
OK, do you have questions? OK, let's take a long break. Uh, and when we come back in the CC building at 1110, we can begin unit four. Do you have questions about unit three? OK, see you in 20 minutes. OK, let's begin unit four on page 41. Remember, the midterm exam will cover units two, three, and four. Unit four, I can see what you mean. Uh, let's look at the warm up questions. You don't have to answer them, but think about each question. What, what is non verbal communication? Theory and go What does it include? Number four, in what ways are nonverbal communication and sign language so different from each other? I should I should explain these in English. Nonverbal communication is communication without using words. Sign language is communication using your hands to talk. Number six, can you think of any problems or dangers in interpreting nonverbal communication? Number seven, discuss some of the cultural differences in nonverbal communication that you have experienced or that you have observed. What are some cultural differences? Number eight, is uh, in what ways is nonverbal communication important? Number nine, which is more important, verbal or nonverbal communication? Why? Number 10, imagine you are an employer who is interviewing Prospective employees. Like this, this is not the right word. It should be prospective, not perspective. PR or prospective, which means someone who wants to be an employee. Prospective. Not consecutive. Prospective. Prospective employees. Wow, that's terrible. Uh, okay. Which nonverbal communication cues would you consider most appropriate? So these are some questions that you can keep in mind uh, as we look at the reading. Before we look at the reading, let's go to page 45 and look at the Comprehension questions. These are some questions that you can pay attention to while we are reading. One, how old is NVC or nonverbal communication? Two, when do we first learn NVC and from whom? Who teaches us? Three, how much of communication is nonverbal? Four, when you hear the sentences, clothes make the man or clothes make the woman, what do you think they mean? Five, which important body part does posture involve? Six, why are the eyes so important in NBC? Seven, in your life, which distance zone 
to each of the following belongs. Your classmates, your teacher, your mom or dad, your boyfriend or girlfriend, your boss, your siblings, the president of MCU. Eight, what are some of the problems in interpreting NBC? Nine, is interpreting NBC an exact science? Why or why not? Uh, so you can keep these questions in mind as we do the reading. Um, before you listen, a one good way to figure out what is going on is to read the first and last sentence of each paragraph in the title. So the title, nonverbal communication. What are you going to say? So this is about nonverbal communication. First paragraph, communication occurs on two levels, verbal and nonverbal. So, uh, and then the last sentence of this paragraph, therefore, we must pay careful attention, not only to the words we use, but also to our NVC. So it looks like this paragraph introduces the idea of NBC and tells us why it is important. Next paragraph. One of the first things we generally observe in others is his or her clothing and accessories. Accessories are things like uh, watch, ring, necklace, earrings, things that you put on your body that are not clothes. And then the last sentence. This explains why business people throughout much of the world quite often dress formally. Slacks, which means suit pants. A dress shirt, which means a button-up shirt. A tie for men a dress or skirt or a pair of slacks and a blouse for women. A blouse is a formal piece of clothing for the top half of your body. So it looks like this paragraph is about clothing and appearance. Let's look at the next pair of one. Likewise, eye position, eye movement, and posture play important roles. Posture is how you position your body. And the last sentence, although each of these sections is equally important, the face, in particular the eyes, and neck probably play a more important role. They can be hidden under tables or behind desks as the lower half of the body chest. So it looks like this paragraph will be about what you do with your body, especially your face. Next paragraph. The anthropologist, Edward T. Hall, has divided space into four zones. Intimate distance, personal distance, social distance, and public distance. In the last sentence, the greatest distance, generally 7.5 meters and over, often occurs during public gatherings, such as a speech. So it looks like this paragraph is about the four kinds of distance. Last paragraph. Many problems can occur when interpreting NDC. And the last sentence. This might also help us to begin to understand why mama and papa know when we're lying, why teachers know we haven't done our homework, and what our boyfriends or girlfriends are really thinking. So it looks like this is about different ways of interpreting NBC, including when you give off 
information unconsciously. 无意识的, uh, so now that we know the questions that you will have to answer, and we have a general idea of what the reading is about, let's take a listen.
Okay, let's go back to the comprehension questions. Let's see if we can find the answers to these questions. One, how old is NVC? Okay, so this probably is in the introduction when we get basic information. NBC is not a new idea. We can see it in artwork that is thousands of years old. So it seems like the answer to this question is, it is thousands of years old. Question two, when do we first learn NBC and from whom? So this seems like it's also part of the introduction, basic ideas here. Our introduction to life begins our introduction to NVC. So when we are born, I think that's the answer. We start learning NVC when we are born. And so who would we learn it from? Probably our parents or guardians, Jim Wooden, or caretakers, whatever. That's all we learn. Right? The first person, the first people we interact with, we learn and receive from them. Number three, how much of communication is nonverbal? That also seems like it's in paragraph one, basic information. Here. It is estimated that 50% or more of communication is nonverbal. So the answer to this question is 50% or more. Question four. When you hear the sentences, clothes make the man or clothes make the woman, what do you think they mean? Well, we just saw in the reading that clothing and appearance are very important. So I guess this is what it means, right? Clothes make a man or the woman means that you are the kind. People think you are some kind of person because of what you wear or how you look. Now, the deeper meaning of this phrase is that what you choose to wear or how you choose to look reflects what kind of person you are. It can tell people what kind of person you are. So like if you don't care how you look, people will know that you don't care because that's how you look. Question five, which important body part does posture involve? Okay, so this is about the body. So it's probably paragraph three. Let's see, posture, posture, posture. Uh, posture. So eye position, eye movement and posture. The next sentence, eyes pointed downward, darting eyes and a curved spine. So the first sentence has three things. The second sentence has three things. I think these two sentences are parallel, pacing them. So the first thing, eye position, corresponds to eyes pointed downward, xiao xiao kan. The second thing, eye movement, corresponds to darting eyes, zuo chuan yu chuan de yin so. So the third thing, posture, should correspond to a curved spine. So which body part is important for posture? It looks like the answer is the spine. Number six. Why are the eyes so important in NBC? 
Okay, eyes, but it's also the body. Uh, important, important. Aha, important. So the face, in particular, the eyes and neck probably play a more important role. Colon, oh, oh. so next we will give the reason. They can't be hidden under tables or behind desks as the lower half of the body can. So why are eyes important? Because you cannot hide them. Everyone will always be able to see your eyes. Question seven. In your life, which distance zone are the following people? Okay, so distance zone. This is in paragraph four. Uh, let's see, what are the four distance zones? Intimate distance, personal distance, social distance, public distance. So uh, intimate, the first one, intimate distance is primarily for private actions. So people you are very close with, like family members or life partners. The second one, personal distance, is the space of a conversation. So when you're talking to someone. Social distance is during business actions, like sales clerks or at social gatherings. And the longest distance is uh, public distance, the fourth one, during public gatherings. Okay, so. Intimate, personal, social, public. Okay, let's look at the question. Your classmates. That seems like a personal distance. Your teacher. Uh, if it's during class, it's probably public distance. If it's like during break and you're asking a question, Maybe it's social distance. Your mom and dad. Probably intimate distance because like you can hug your parents, right? Your boy or girlfriend also intimate distance. Your boss. Uh, again, if it's in a meeting, it's probably public distance. But if your boss is talking to you, it's probably social distance. Just like your teacher. Your sibling, which means brothers and sisters. Also intimate distance, right? Family members. The president of MCU. I'm pretty sure this is public distance. Even if for some reason you get to talk to our president, I think you will still want to keep a far distance to show respect. Uh, so it's also still probably public distance. Question eight. What are some of the problems in interpreting in VC? Okay, problems. So that's the last paragraph. Many problems. So uh, first, Second, third, fourth. So it looks like there are four main problems. First is cultural. So people from different cultures may have a different idea about NBC. Second, it is inexact. So it's not very precise. Uh, there are many possible reasons that might influence NBC. Third, it can be easily misinterpreted. So people can make mistakes about what a uh, specific action means. Fourth, generalizations and overgeneralizations about NBCs can lead to stereotypes. Uh, 
So these are the four main problems. Cultural, it's not precise, uh, it's easily mistaken, and it could lead to stereotypes. And then question nine, is interpreting NBC an exact science? We just saw the answer is no. Why or why not? It said um, there are uh, it says no one can determine every individual characteristic that could influence NBC. So the reason it is not on exact science is because there are so many possible reasons um, that someone might be doing some action. It's impossible to be sure. So that's why it is not exact. OK, do you have questions about these questions about part B? OK, let's go back to the reading and we will go uh, in detail and I will point out some things that I think you should know. On two levels, when you talk about levels, you use the word on. On one level, on another level, on different levels, on. It is not a new idea. This phrase is quite common. Or you might say it's nothing new. Taylor Swift has a song with Katie Richards called Nothing New. Art work. Uh, another way to say this is a work of art. Uh, you might, uh, if you would think that something is really amazing and great, you might give the compliment and say that it is a work of art, but you would not say that it is an artwork. Basically, it means uh, in general, so we're not being very precise. Basically, the root basic uh, comes from, sorry, base, B A S E. The base is the bottom, the foundation, Jifu. So, basic means the simple ideas that are very important, Jifu Ganyin. So, basically, it just means Jifu Ganyin. An introduction to something or someone is the first time that you encounter something or someone. You use the word to. An introduction to a new teacher, an introduction to a new computer or something. To gather. Uh, this word has two meanings. If there is no object, like here, gather means to come together. If there is an object, it means to collect those things. Opinions, to form opinions, means that, uh, to come up with opinions. We use the word form. Form uh, in, as a noun, form means the shape of something. So the idea is that you have different ideas and you put them together into some kind of shape. And that shape is your opinion. Uh, so in Chinese, form means existing, form. So to form ideas, to form opinions. And ideas or opinions about something, we use the word about. Uh, but if you say thoughts, 想法, you can say thoughts about or thoughts on. 
you can also use the word on. Uh, eye contact means whether your eyesight comes into contact with the other person's eyesight. Contact means to 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 bump into or to hit. So eye contact is if you are looking into the other person's eyes. And if the other person is looking into your eyes, you can mentally something. The importance of something. We use, we say like, uh, why something is important. The importance of something. We use the word of. And also the, the importance of. And in this sentence, it is estimated that 50% or more of Communication is nonverbal. The it does not mean anything. The actual subject of this sentence begins with that. So you want to do this. And then this is on that one I see. 50% or more. This part is a complete sentence. When you have a complete sentence as a noun, you express that by adding the word that. So then say it's a true or sega means it's a true. It's a true hands and true part of the down to either means. That's a good one that you do well. So this is 50% or more of the communication. Don't say it is. I hold a video to do this in non-verbal. So it's a book like that on the table is a one that you do well. One that you want to say down to either means. 的话,前面用that表示 to something, we use the word to. Next paragraph. Generally, which means uh, usually in a normal situation, Uh, you can say observe in others, you can say observe about others. Once I don't just mentally. When you read, you read this as her or his. The slash check out is or. So her or his clothing and accessories. Uh, shorts don't food. Short pants. Sandals uh, are open toe shoes. Uh, but if you're talking about shoes with no back, those are slippers, horses, slippers. A body piercing. Uh, you punch a hole in the body. So like, if you want to wear your earrings, you'll punch a hole in your ear. So it's a sentence You can also pierce your belly button, you can pierce your nose. Some people pierce their eyebrows. These are body piercings. To pierce just means to make a hole in something. Uh, so this sentence structure again. We must make a good impression from the very beginning, even before we introduce ourselves. This is a complete sentence. 
we is the subject, must make is the verb, and a good impression is the object. So this is a complete sentence. Because there is a that in front of this, we know that this sentence is being used as a noun, means so. So in the bigger sentence, most of us know that this thing, the subject is most of us, the verb is no, and the object is this entire sentence that blah, 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 blah ourselves. Uh, okay, today we would say business people is one word. You can put these two words together. A business person, business people. Throughout much of the world. So throughout the world, which means uh, around the world, across the globe. So everywhere in the world. Throughout means uh, in this place, it's everywhere in this place. So throughout history, which means everywhere in history. Throughout the building means everywhere in the building. Uh, but here it's not the whole world, it's much of the world. So not the entire world. Studios on album and defaults, much of the world. Uh, I should say, to dress formally. Formal means official. So to dress formally means to wear uh, formal clothing. Slacks, these are the pants you would wear if you are wearing a suit. A dress shirt. This is the kind of shirt with buttons like I'm wearing. I'm wearing a dress shirt right now. Uh, another name for a dress shirt is a button down shirt. Uh, because there is a button on your collar, you can see, and you can fix your collar to your shirt. Collar, C-O-L-L-A-R. There we go. Um, and blouse. A blouse is clothing for the upper part of your body. It's formal clothing. Uh, if you read something older, uh, a blouse used to also describe uh, clothing for men, but today it's only used for women. Okay, likewise means in the same way. Wise means way. Like here means alike, right? The same. This is like that. These two are the same. We see this uh, use of the word wise in a word like otherwise. Otherwise means no thing. So, so now, so which means if it is not like this then it is like that. So in this other way, otherwise. Downward, which means looking down or going down. The ending word means some kind of direction. So like upward, downward, leftward, rightward. If you are using British English, you would add an S, downwards. But American English just says downward. Darting comes from the word dart. A dart is a small metal point that you can throw at a board. So a darting eyes, is describing your eyes like darts. They're moving here, they're moving there. Um, and some people think this is untrustworthy behavior. Because you like the pretty 
to make a good impression or to leave a good impression. Both are okay. Okay, so the next one is um, to separate something into different things. We use the word into. Any kind of change, we would use the word into. Change A into B, make A into B, separate A into B, any kind of change. Uh, the neck is the area between your head and your body. What's it? Shoulders, the area on top of your arms. Waist with the area around your stomach, y'all. Hips, the areas on top of your legs are tiny. Um, the area between the shoulders and the waist, we usually would call that like the chest, shoulder. Or if it's uh, longer from your neck to your waist, we would call that your torso, chugan. In particular means particularly, it means especially. Yoshi. And notice this sentence. Let's look at this grammar. They can't be hidden under tables or behind desks as the lower half of the body can. This just means like. But this second sentence is not complete, right? The lower half of the body, this is the subject, can. There's no verb, and then there's no object. And this is because as is comparing these two sentences. It is saying that these two sentences are very similar. So when uh, it gives us the second sentence, it only gives us the parts that are different. So the complete sentence is, the lower half of the body can be hidden under tables or behind desks. This part is the same, so it is omitted from the second sentence. Uh, let's see, intimate, 亲密的, 亲密的. Suggest uh, means to give a hint or to give a general idea. In Chinese, we would translate this as Extends from A to B. To extend means to, to uh, be long, to go from A to B. Yansen. From A, Yansen, B. To extend from A to B. So direct physical contact, which means that you're touching somebody else. So the distance is zero. Up to, which means sang da, do da, yun da. Like this is the maximum. About 45 centimeters. Primarily means mostly, usually. The word primary means first. So primarily means the first idea or the most important idea about this concept. Uh, how do you read this? 0 0.75, 0 0.75. 
uh, usually it's missing a from from 0.75 to 1.2 meters. Notice this: the space in which you generally have a conversation with someone. So this is a relative clause, when she begs. But uh, so the original sentence is: you generally have a conversation with someone in this space. Uh, but because of grammar, we would move the push to the front of this sentence. Now, if you use the word which, and like before which there is a preposition, the chichitsu, then the preposition moves with the which. So it's not you generally have a conversation with someone in which this space. You move both the in and the which to the front of this sentence. The distance varies, so it is different. And so therefore the next part of the sentence is, how do you determine the distance? Why is it different? Depending on the closeness of the person. So if you are close with this person, the distance will be shorter. If you are not close with this person, the distance will be longer. So it varies depending on some reason, which means if it's this case, it will be different from if it is that case. In Chinese, we call this e or e. Farther, another word is further. The difference between these two words, farther, can only be used for real physical distance. Will be tricky. Further can also be used for metaphorical distance. Be used on the tree. So further can mean farther, but farther cannot mean further. Further can mean both physical distance and metaphorical distance. If you are at a gathering or at a meeting, you use the word at. Not in, not on, at a gathering, at a meeting. Rates can also mean the biggest, so the biggest distance. And over, which means even more. So 7.5 meters and over. So starting from 7.5 and even farther away. Uh, this is missing the word at. At a speech. Uh, right. Okay, do you have questions so far about this reading? Okay, that's it for today, and I will see you next week.